I have a very anxious and restless mind and I encounter lots of psychological and physical triggers in the most mundane everyday situations. I can call myself a survivor to a certain extent because some serious crap did happen in my life, but I managed to overcome it. And one of the most important insights that I got is that while I can cope with some serious life challenges, some teeny tiny upsetting moments can really get on top of me. So what do I do not to be broken-hearted and broken-minded? I'm no longer fighting my anxiety. I'm just trying to live through it as intentionally as I can, which is what we are going to talk about today. If your mind is somewhat similar to mine, my main advice to you is never let the anxiety situation go too far. But what is too far? Let me share with you what Fernando Pessoa, a Portuguese poet and philosopher, had to say about it. That is how I experience life as apocalypse and cataclysm. Each day brings an increasing inability in myself to make the smallest gesture, even to imagine myself confronting clear, real situations. The presence of others, always such an unexpected event for the soul, grows daily more painful and distressing. Talking to others makes me shudder. If they show any interest in me, I flee. If they look at me, I tremble. I'm constantly on the defensive. Life and other people bruise me. I can't look reality in the eye. I must admit that I did have some moments when I felt exactly like that, but luckily those situations don't happen that often anymore. So what do I do <laughs> to avoid that? It's just very, very simple things based on self-care and on shifting focus on the inside instead of the outside. We never stay in the same state of mind, in the same mood or mental environment. And if you are like me and you experience some utterly anxious cycles, it is always important to remember that there are many, many factors influencing you. We are not isolated minds. We are closely connected with our body, with the planet, with nature, with society, with family, after all. That's why I try to listen to the cycles of nature, of the moon even, <laughs> or of womanhood, for example. Age influences in a very important way, and there are certain aging processes going on in our body that simply cannot be ignored. My anxiety self-care routine now is so much more different than it was, say, five years ago from now. If you haven't tried anything like that, I encourage you to explore more and see what happens. Just remember that you are not a stone. You are an ever-changing river and you should respect your seasons. For me, it's very simple here. If I'm having heightened anxiety, I don't talk to people who I don't want to talk to, I don't meet anyone who I don't want to, and sometimes I can even forget about politeness and previous agreements, because I know that if I force myself to do something, it will get even worse. It's just, it has been proven so many times in my life. And as soon as I feel better, I usually come back to people, but not always. Sometimes a surge in anxiety can be a very clear and important sign that you should pass on a certain contact. For example, this week I was approached by a potential sponsor of the channel and we got even a, a video call scheduled, so the sponsor insisted on having a video call, which was already horrible for me, as I prefer like mailing or texting, but I was also feeling a very very high anxiety inside. I felt like something's, something was wrong, that I shouldn't do that. But I was still like, oh, but 
we should we can just talk and discuss the matter it doesn't hurt but still i canceled our meeting two hours prior the actual meeting and i felt just amazing no guilt at all i went for a walk got brian a new pillow and on my way back i was thinking that talking to someone that i doubted whether to work with or not was a huge waste of time and great anxiety trigger for me lower anxiety and higher integrity versus sponsors money the choice was very obvious to me but also other people are such a huge anxiety trigger themselves for so many of us let me know in the comments if it's true for you personally i'm a humanist i love people i care about people but sometimes it can get really overwhelming that's why i never punish myself if i prefer to walk for 30 minutes instead of taking a bus ride with like being surrounded by other humans or i prefer to walk downstairs or upstairs instead of taking a, a very teeny tiny elevator with some strangers i always choose supermarkets with self checkout and a huge confession here before leaving the apartment every time i look through the door i to make sure that there are no neighbors in the hallway half of life is lost in charming others the other half is lost in going through anxieties caused by others leave this play you have played enough If your partner knows your anxiety patterns and you warn them about particular triggers, anxiety triggers, it can become a real game changer, but it requires a lot of attention, patience and respect. My husband Brian always knows when I'm anxious and whether I need more space or more connection in certain moments. We have gone a very long way of building our relationships in a very loving and respectful and understanding way and it wasn't easy it wasn't easy at all and maybe i should make a separate video about that and about the insights that we got just let me know if you will be interested in such video Try to find what mindfulness and calming practice works best for you. Because, for example, seated meditation that is uh, often offered for anxious people doesn't work for me. And I talked about it a lot on this channel. And believe me, I tried many variants. It just doesn't work. My best meditation is speed walking and listening to the music. This is when I get my best ideas and reach the blissful thoughtlessness. As for a physical activity, try to find the one that causes less anxiety in you. That's why I never go to a gym anymore, because other people working out around me cause me anxiety. I always work out at home and I don't have any schedules. I just do whatever I whatever I feel like on a certain day. It can be yoga, pilates or some mild strength training with an eight kilo kettlebell or I just do nothing. Listen to your body. Watch the reactions that your body and mind have on certain food-related behaviors. Of course, there are certain situations when you should seek professional advice and please don't ignore certain circumstances. But in all other cases, it's just one thing that is required is attention and mindfulness in relation to food. It's a very sensitive topic for me at the moment. That's why I cannot talk about it that much today because I'm still trying to improve my relationships with food. And I used to have and I still have certain struggles. And I can say for sure, just from my own experience, that some diet 
patterns have a huge influence on anxiety. Most times you may not even notice it, but as soon as you get very attentive and brutally honest, you can notice certain things that can be changed. The more honest you are, the more open, the less fear you have, because there's no anxiety about being exposed or revealed to others. I cannot call myself lazy, shallow, or irresponsible, but I'm definitely a huge procrastinator inside, <laughs> just trust me. And if I was loose with that and didn't do anything, I wouldn't be where I am now, that's for sure. So what do I do? First of all, I've taken one of the most important decisions in my life. Years ago, I went freelancing. And I do realize that it's a privilege that not all people can do that. But trust me, I'm paying my price for that. For example, I'm earning, like at the moment, I'm earning much less than I could if I had a full-time nine to five job, but at the moment it's just physically impossible for me. I went freelancing in order to play in my own work day without old school labor rules. And I know that my most productive time is in the morning. That's when I do most of my tasks. And I know that I'm the most creative in the evenings. And that's when I write or make art. I'm very disciplined with my work, I make a constant to-do lists, I hold myself accountable for everything, but still I make certain adjustments when needed depending on my physical and emotional state. If you are a procrastinator like me, just find something that helps you, some inspiration trigger maybe, maybe listening to certain music or talking to someone or petting your cat if you have this opportunity, if you're lucky enough, or maybe find some gratification scheme. For example, I remember when about five years ago, I was doing a very, very difficult translation project. It was very long, it was very urgent, and I thought I wouldn't make it because my mind was just exploding. And what I did is after every 1000 translated words, I watched a TV show that I was enjoying at that moment. And this is how it worked. So I worked all day, like 12 hours a day, but in those little segments. And it was the best because I found my gratification. <laughs> Very simple, but a working one. There is anxiety that requires therapy, but there is certain anxiety that we are born with and that stays with us forever, no matter what. And it's totally okay. It's okay to have an anxious mind fluttering like a tiny bird in the wind. Anxiety was born in the very same moment as mankind. And since we will never be able to master it, we will have to learn to live with it, just as we have learned to live with storms. Feel free to share in the comments what is your experience with anxiety, maybe some best or worst practices, because every experience is valuable. And if you haven't already, check out my second channel where I talk about everything related to art and crafting. And a new art vlog is already there about collaging, having a tour in one, one of the museums in Belgrade and many other interesting stuff. And thank you so much for watching and for being here. And as always, be safe and keep your heart open. And I hope to see you soon. Пока-пока!